Now you two here. I'm here with who? Uh, Irvin Ochoa. And what did you do at the remote duel today? I got top eight. Uh, just playing all day. Uh, I didn't think I would do so well, but it just ended up working out. For sure. Congrats on making top eight. I know you're a good player, so I believe in yourself, and I would not be surprised if you make back to back top. And what were you playing, by the way? I was playing Snake Eye. Snake Fire. Eye. Yes. Pure. The, the best deck. You already know what it is. Already ready. Yeah. <laughs> ready when you are, man. All right, cool. So I played a 42 card list, and I I saw a bunch of deck profiles on like about YCS Indie, and I just kind of like took a little bit of everything and just added my own splash to it. But it's most for most of the engine is generic, but I did main deck some cards that are not being main decked by other people. Mm -hmm. So for the for the engine, it's very standard. So it's three wanted, the two the OSS and the field spell, the three bonfire. Um, the Snake Idea Bellasar, this card's really good. It, it's it's so much better than Jet Synchron. It's, it's just a, another body. It's just another... It makes your field spell an extender. Um, and then Double Flame Birch. And then for um, the rest, three Witch, three Ash, obviously, two Popular, <clears throat> and Oak. So this is all, like, solved, right? There's Besides... Mm -hmm. I mean, I think everyone's playing this card now, but pretty mm -hmm. standard uh, engine. And then for the non-engine, this is where it was a little different. So everyone's playing like 18, like Paolo was playing like 18 hand traps and other people are playing like, some people are even playing more than that. Um, I end, I think I ended up going with 12 hand, oh, 13 technically, 12 hand traps. One of them was a cross out target and then six uh, like non-standard cards. So I ended up playing three droplet, <clears throat> three talents. And these cards were insane. They were also good for cross out targets and like we're in a hand trap war. Where like when my if my pony even like sneezes on me right they just look at me they see snake eye ash it demands a response and like okay. as soon as it like you know we resolve that chain mm -hmm. I just go talents look at your hand and it was really good or I used talents a lot today to look at hand and to take and two times where I resolve talents to take like I just like OTK through nib or something like there's yeah. some hands where you can't really <laughs> play around nib or or if you open up two cards like two really good cards you can like set up flame bridge and access code before you go into the raging phoenix line but mm -hmm. talents was really good and then for the rest of the hand traps it was oh sorry and then obviously the three cross out the like the god card of the format damn near yeah. i think it's in well like a lot of decks and then for the best like generic hand traps i went with three imperm three ash three valor three moonlight and the one in Biru. um i didn't see a lot of people playing this card i'm actually glad i didn't play that three it was just a cross out target and mm -hmm. I did see it one game and it won me that it won me that match. Like it won me the game three because my opponent played really hard into it and I had it mm -hmm. and I was actually happy I drew it. So that's the main deck. It's forty two. Forty two. <clears throat> and then yep. And then for the extra deck, it's the Hope Harbinger, um, Sky Typhon, and then the OTK package, Solantis and Raging Phoenix, and then for all my link for more links, Appaloosa, Celine, Princess, Access Code, Hida, <clears throat> Dark, IP, SP, Phoenix, Anima, and the one card that I played today that I hadn't tested at all, but I was told it was good was Link Spider, and actually I promise, I promise it won me like two games where Yo. my opponent debuted me. Yeah, and I just went like, I was like, okay, Fields will bring up my monster. Now I have a token, link it away. And I kept playing. I OTK'd someone through Nibiru, and the other one where it was a simplified game state where I got, um, I was shiftered, and I went for the shifter board with Snake Eye, with the Snake Eye combo with one Snatch resolving. And I got Nibiru at the point where I had IP and Oak and the, the Field spell. And then when he nibiru me, my IP, everything got tributed, obviously, on resolution. The Field spell triggers brings out Oak. I bring out, I link away the, the token into this, into Link Spider. Both, both of those go into SP, banish the, the Nibiru. Holy, so, you're crazy, bro. Yo. <laughs> yeah, so, so it was really good, yeah. And, um, yeah, I, re I really liked it, yeah. Um, that's the extra deck. And then for the side deck, so for the side deck, I'm I'm playing, like, it's kind of, like, generic, not not really. Like, I would say, like, the generic cards for sure. For example, like, the three skill drain. Like, it's in, every, it's in most, like, fire lists. It should be. You, sh you can shut it, the... the Reason being, you can shut off whenever you want, and it's just like a turn skip card, right? You can also side it in versus 
I was citing this card. Where I played against three Tempa today. I only lost to one of them. But if I, like, let's say they make me go first and, like, I won, I would whether I won or lost, I would side this card going in, whether I was going first or second. Or, like, mm-hmm. if I lost and I want them to go first, I side this card in still. Um, just because it's just, like, you know, they're just going to go Spheres Pass. I set Skill Drain and yeah, I should be fine from there. Mm-hmm. I played the two Bissiels for, like, Despia, Voiceless. I think maybe the Bissiels were really good. And I, I kept seeing both of these together. So Magnuma was all, every time I was all Magnuma, I saw Magnuma twice today. And I was only, every time I saw Magnuma, I saw Druid. So I was only, like, Searching for Flame Bridge, but it's not bad. I, mean, I can't complain. It's a body. Mm-hmm. And then what I was prepared for was the mirror. So I just went with the approach where <clears throat> I went with um, like take cards. So I went with three mind control, change of heart, the three phantasmae, and the double panker tops. And oh, the one duster just for back row. I, I saw duster I'll, every time I sided it. I saw, I think, maybe like twice out of three times I sided it. But these are the cards I was siding in basically versus the mirror. That's what I was mostly worried about. Mm-hmm. And if you think about it, the format, and it's in my main deck too, right? And mm-hmm. the format, everyone's playing this card. So why play these hand traps and, you know, into that matchup, you know, mm-hmm. post side when I could get punished for with the cross out for it. And there's no counterplay to this card besides like you know, that one side frame card. So mm-hmm. what I ended up doing is like, okay, post side, I'm going to keep three cross out in. I'll take out Nibiru. I'll take out all my hand traps <clears throat> besides Imperm. Mm-hmm. And post side, this is my main, this is my board going into their, my my cards going into their board. So I just have a bunch of blowout cards. And today I resolved Phantasmate to draw for three cards. Yo. And then like I drew into another Phantasmate and I wasn't able to, Phantasmic got me into a Magnum Mutt, but the the guy had already used Flame versus Spawn Trap IP, so I couldn't, you know, really get too much of, like as much value as I would like to. But I did draw into another Phantasmate and I mm-hmm. kept it in hand because when he brought up the IP, I just chained Phantasmate only cares if a Link Monster summon, not if you link summon. So mm-hmm. when IP comes out, I drop Flame Burge and I drop this and I get to, you know, draw two, put back one, and I have another body. And in, in the mirror or just in Snake Eye in general, having bodies is really important. Mm-hmm. So um yeah, this was this was the deck I played today. You know, I think I think I did well. The losses that I had, you know, um, I think it was only one loss. It was, uh, un- you know, uncontrollable. I think game one, I did have a misplay, but we went over it and mm-hmm. he told me, like, you know, it didn't really matter. Um, but, you know, game two, he opened better than I did. Couldn't do anything about it. But, you know, everyone was really nice. My matchups were, let's see, I wrote down all my matchups. I lost most of my dice rolls today. So I was going. To, I was going second a lot. Yeah. So round one versus Tempai, lost dice roll two zero. Round two versus Tempai, lost dice roll two one. Round three versus Snake Guy, I lost the dice roll two one. Round four was was versus Purely two zero. Um, round five was versus Snake Guy two zero. Round six was versus Runic, and I was not expecting this deck. <laughs> and he says like I win a dice roll. It's my first dice roll, and it's the only draw that I have. And I go first. I set up my full board. And he goes to enter battle phase, and I'm like, holy shit. I'm like, oh, what the, what? what's going on, bro? And I had everything. I had the Hope Harbor Injury, Appaloosa, the IB, the Flame Bridge, mm-hmm. cards in hand, some stuff set. And I was like, you know, I was like, okay, sure. And then he goes activate Runic uh, Destruction, for example. And I was like, okay, it's Runic. Okay. I barely got that game. We got into such a simplified game state. He opened up, he broke most of my board. He opened up, he ended up with a Runic Fountain in Grave. Oh, sorry, a Runic Fountain on board. He had um, Die Fight, Tikaboo, Synchro Zone. And we got into simplified game state where I had to, I had a Flame Burge on board and another, uh, I had a Flame Burge on board and an Anima. Mm-hmm. And I had to tribute summon Nibiru for game. And mm-hmm. I triggered the Flame Burge to bring back two bodies and I already had him at 4,000. Mm-hmm. And I just went for game. I, I ashed the card scanner. We got in such a simplified game state. I had two ashes. One of them got banished off of his um, runic tip uh-huh. that he went. Um, he used one of the. He used. He went duality when he just had Tikuwa by Ash it, and then you know I hit him. I put him down to four thousand, and then it goes back to me. He top decks uh, card scanner. He mm-hmm. activates. I'm like, no, I'm ashing that too. I'm not letting <laughs> you draw any cards. <laughs> the only card in his hand was Runic Fountain. He had no more Runic spells. So, um, but yeah, it, it was it was a lot of fun. Everyone I played against, like, you know, we were just you know giving each other tips on how like a lot of the people I played against, like they had they already had their invites or they were just you know. They were looking to get their invite, mm-hmm. and we would go over, like, after the match was over, we would just go over, like, what could we have done differently and not be salty about our losses, which is, like, mm-hmm. what I really like. And I like to talk to my opponents that way, like, you know, what could I have done differently? Or, like, do you think you just drew better? Sometimes your opponent just draws better, and that's Yu-Gi-Oh, right? Yeah, so, that's what RNG yeah, happens. That, that, <laughs> 
yeah, but that that was the that was the list, and you know, it was it was, it was a lot of fun, and yeah, I have nothing else to say. It was just it was just it was it was a great time. <laughs> and sure. I, for shout outs, I'd like to shout out uh, shout out to my friend Oscar Ortiz for finally he got his invite. Hey, He's a really good old. player. He's been yeah he's been grinding really hard. Um, if you follow me on my social medias, you see him on my stories all the time. Mm-hmm. One of my best friends, and I'm really happy. He did it with Melodious too. Ooh. He ended up going X two. Yeah, he got like I think he got like 13th or 16th place. I forget. Shout out to him. Um, you know we play a lot. Shout out to Chris Latrue, one of my really good friends as well. He's always like you know going back and forth. He's really big on theory. And, you know theorizing like how can we be different to beat the meta game mm-hmm. good player as well and he he's already he's gonna be at nats already mm-hmm. um shout out to my friend adonis or you know he, he's my my old head uh, edison goat friend you know he doesn't play modern as much but we, you know i like playing against him because when we play like he the mentality that some goat and edison players have mm-hmm. is transferable and it's applicable to modern because mm-hmm. it teaches you to hold cards right not just like spaz everything out like Correct. It teaches you to slow down and like really think about your plays because in Go it's a lot slower. So mm-hmm. shout out to him. Um, you know, yeah, shout out to all of my friends in our group chat. You know that you know our Nats group chat. Like, you know, there's too many people for me to like think, but those are the three people that stand out. And also shout out to my girlfriend for letting me play Yu-Gi-Oh all day today because hey, you know, she, yeah. And then <laughs> I, at the very end of the tournament, I kept telling her, I was like, okay, babe, I'm just gonna as soon as I lose two in a row or like one or two in the early we we can go we can just go do something mm-hmm. and i just kept winning and she kept like she's like did you lose yet and i was like no i, I won <laughs> and at one point i was six i was like six oh she's like so like, you're not gonna lose i think you're gonna win and i'm like i guess so i, I don't know uh, all the the whole day i just went into the tournament with a nonchalant like i'm just here to play and get better and like mm-hmm. you know you know just support my friend mostly i was just playing so that you know while my friend is playing the event you know we can check in on each other after in the our discord channel and just you know talk about you know how the match went we could have done differently etc but yeah, it was a good day and thanks for having me on yeah anytime man congrats um back to back top and you're gonna be going to national this year yeah yeah i'll be on i'll be going to nets and i'll most likely be playing like unless there's like a e-band list for for some reason which i would understand but i don't mm. think so <laughs> i'm a, for sure probably be playing fire um, and hopefully getting my hands on those new, those new uh, Fiendsmith cards for sure. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Congrats on making top eight. Next time you will win back to back. And also, I love your max rarity, by the way. <laughs> thanks, thanks, bro. Yeah, this this is just part of it. Just uh, I like maxing out the staples and stuff. And then I was like, I got my hands on a good deal for the fire stuff. So I was like, you know what? I'll take it to Nats play with it. And then I'll probably offload it there if someone wants it. Heck yeah, heck yeah. And uh, hopefully you got more tops. And looking forward to seeing you more in the future. Your boy, your boy, Cyberhorn92, and Irvin is signing out. Peace.